Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're back to oil painting. We're going to do something that's kind of tropical, maybe with some water running through it. Of course, if you're enjoying these, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. We'll start off today here with our two inch brush and some blue and white. As you can see, I've done a basic sketch and I've done a little bit of clear gel and white just across the, the top. Of course, the clear gel and the white and everything else is available on the website if you guys need some. That clear gel really helps things to kind of blend a little better, but without becoming too slippery. It's not, it's pretty thick stuff. It comes in a tube. It's not like your standard really thin runny medium. So that's good. Helps to keep things a little bit stickier. Next I'll scrub in our clouds. And you see I've just got a little, a little white with a touch of red. This is good for clouds. And we gotta already, look at this, we're already having to pick our light source. So I guess we should probably have the light coming across probably like this, kind of through the jungle. I think that would look good. So there you go. So put more light on the right hand side than on the left. Hmm, nice. And you may or may not want to do shadows. You could probably get away with just the blue of the canvas being your shadow. I don't know if I'm going to put shadows in or not. I haven't really decided. I guess we'll figure it out in a second, won't we? <laughs> Nice, good little layers of clouds. A little bit of brush strokes showing is fine. Looks tropical to me. Now I'm gonna drop on some details here to this background mountain, and I don't want you to spend a lot of time on this. A few brushes of color and some smudgy brush strokes up here to indicate, I don't know, trees and stuff like that. The reason I don't wanna spend a whole lot of time on this is because I know it's going to be covered for the most part, right? Because we have tons of palm trees and stuff coming in. So lots of palm trees here, lots of palm trees here, and probably just the top of it's going to be available to be seen. There we go. And I'll just rub that right in so that you have nice little, you know, variations and areas where it's doing different stuff. There we go. I like the detail round for this so that, you know, the little brush strokes kind of represent a tree, like each little brush stroke. Now we're gonna go ahead and block in a lot of trees back here. <laughs> now, they kind of go basically just to the mountain and then a little bit above. It's kind of your target range, somewhere in there. And maybe, yeah, let's make these a little bigger. So here's the deal. When you go to do these, here's what I find best. Slice a little color on like this, just slap it on, and then Take your brush and pull out from that color out and around like this to create your tree and pull with no pressure on the brush. See that? The bristles are not bending at all. The thing, let me show you over here. <laughs> if you go like this, see and you try to put it all on once, I'm putting the paint down and making my stroke, it's way too thick. We need it really small. If you don't do this, if you skip this and you just do it the regular way, you are going to have big problems later because you'll never be able to make it look far away. So put the paint down first, then pull it to where you need it to go. There, and see so you can use these, use the brush strokes like this to kind of create the little, the little trees back here. Leave fuzzy areas, that's why I smooshed some muddy color. I put, started to smoosh some muddy color over there as well. Good. Light, light touches. And then, yeah, I'll tell you what, when we're going here, let me do the same idea way up here, right, right here. Put some color down, just like this. Not a whole lot. I got some greens and some yellows in there. There's some yellow right along that left-hand edge. Not a lot of paint, just enough. Wipe out your brush real good. <laughs> and then just take it and no pressure on the brush. Just pull it to create your little palm tree. Now let's take just a minute break from painting trees and kind of jungly stuff and let's do our water. So I'm underpainting here, which is whatever dark colors, looks like a little bit of everything that's dark, even some green. Why not? This is obviously the sand in the foreground. Gotta have the sand under the water in the foreground, otherwise it doesn't look quite as good. Take a little of this lighter color now, a little, little white maybe. Just throw stuff around, right? There. OK. 
kind of just get that underpainted. There's no, me no uh, medium under here. Yep, I had the right word. I don't know why I didn't think I did. There's none of our clear gel medium under the water, so it makes it very easy for me to, to highlight, but a little bit trickier for me to do the underpainting. So don't put it on too thick to compensate. Just work at it really hard. There, and then as you go back, we'll get much, much, much lighter. Start to add some blue into that. Now I've went ahead and sketched in some basic thoughts as to where I want some limbs. I, you know, it's the same idea. I kind of replicated what we had going on over here, but this time we're just going bigger. And I do want a bunch of background stuff, but I think that just by getting this in first, we'll have a, a better time figuring out where we need our background stuff. After all, the background is not, not that important. It's just there to kind of fill in. So anyway, now the difference between last time and this time is that I'm changing my technique. Well, there's the difference. That's a big difference, isn't it? Now the, the, the thing that I'm doing here is I'm kind of dropping in each of the palm leaves, the palm fronds, in separately and carefully. The other time was way easier. I'm not going to go near that loose this time. There we go, because this matters. Now, obviously, you do have a little extra safety net here because you've got so much going on up here that you could easily cover any mistakes that you may have. Good. So you see there's many different techniques. The brush strokes are, once you get the brush strokes kind of going, you can do whatever you want. And I'm using many different colors, reds and all sorts of wonderful things up here just to add a little variety <laughs> there. A little green and yellow, I guess we have to use green because it's a tree, but I want a lot of other colors too. All right, I'm not even worried about my highlights so much. It's mostly just the mid-tones and the, the shape that I'm trying to get it. We need one that comes down like that. The mid-tones and the shapes. Highlights and darks, we can figure out later. There we go. We really needed that one. We, get, we had to have something that was going to change it up for us. Otherwise, it would just be too flat and boring. There we go. And I'm purposely kind of going a little bit sparing so that I can save my clouds under there. I really do like those clouds. As simple as they were, they were effective. So I want to see if I can try to keep some of it. Now let's go ahead and highlight up here. So I've got my detail round and I'm going to just carefully layer on a little bit of light not too much just enough and do it where it counts don't just throw it in at random everywhere you want it because this way if you kind of do it where it matters where it'll show up you get a much better effect okay that looks decent <laughs> then we just keep going around doing the same thing you'll note that this brush is softer than the others and so it tends to layer without without mixing with the paint underneath as badly. I wouldn't tell you that it doesn't mix at all because it certainly does. But if you limit the amount of paint in the background and use a softer brush, things tend to go your way. <laughs> there. I'm just gonna keep doing this over and over again, remembering that my light's kind of filtering through this way. Now I'm gonna drop on a highlight, not a lot of a highlight, just a little bit, right here. And I'm doing it purposely really wacky and rough. There we go, right down the tree. And let's see, maybe a light here and a light here. Be really quick when you do this, because that way you kind of get better, rougher effect. And look, oop, there's a light or two in the dark area where it just doesn't matter. This way, you kind of get more, you get more action back here. There we go. We want our little jungle to be full of trees. I think it's about time we start tossing in some of our water highlights. I did more rocks than I want. You see, I added a few more to them just because I felt like, eh, may as well. So I added a few more than I actually want in the final product because you end up losing quite a bit, but you know, in a good way, because it's, it's hidden back there. And then you kind of get, you know, you get little, I don't know, little extra things, extra things. There you go. Perfect term. <laughs> you get extra things that 
you know, rocks that are like sticking out or you just barely see, you get those by covering up some and they just barely show through. There. And I don't want to do all of it. Maybe mm, 70%. And then we'll come back and highlight. And that's probably the part you actually want to see. This is kind of this is kind of going to be repeated again with light colors. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the fan brush to paint in our little waterfall. And as odd as it seems, because I know, you know, when you paint a waterfall, the fan brush probably isn't the first thing you look, you look to grab. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not doing the whole thing with this. What I want to get with this brush is a bit of texture going on here. Not a lot, just, just a small bit. And like I said, won't do the whole thing with it. It's an older brush and it's got some really nice ragged edges. There we go. Let's go over maybe right, right about here. See, so yeah, just keep, keep working on it with this brush. It really does leave a nice, nice rough water effect. Maybe on this side, we got it crashing over coming down this way. We could, we can totally do that if we want to. Yeah, kind of feather it out like that into the, into the rest. Okay, that looks good. Set that brush down, pick up a detail round, which would be something that you would, you know, imagine that I would use for a waterfall. And I can just simply fill it in a little more solid now. See, it gives a lot of little, little lines. Now I'll make some bigger lines. Nice, you notice it comes off a little brighter because the brush is softer, mixes less. I always mention it, but there it is in action. You can totally see the difference. There, I'm just finishing up, kind of softening the base of the, of the little waterfall. I did add a couple more rocks just for fun. The blender brush is really good for stuff like that, softening edges and all that, all that fun stuff. Okay, now let's think about our rocks here. Of course, we know where light's coming from. We've talked about that before. Kind of just pick a spot. Okay, there we go. Pick the spot. And I'm just drop, dropping this in. And maybe I'll, I'll try to get in as much of this color as I want. Maybe not making it perfect. See how they're not perfect? That's okay. And then what we can do is, you know, when we come back with another color or whatever, our brush runs out of paint, we can sort of make them look better then. So for now, just working on the color that I have on the brush, that'll save a lot of time and frustration too, you know, save you from having to keep changing colors. I mean, three quarters of the time that you spend on a painting could be spent on the palette if you're not careful. You know, mixing paint, remixing paint, getting new paint, so just don't do that. <laughs> do your best to, to use what you got, put it where you want it, come back later with a different color and I think you'll have more fun. Okay, there you go. There's my tip for the day. <laughs> All right, there's some more right here. Don't forget about the rocks in the waterfall too. Now, one thing I'd love to do up here is to get some extra detail going in the rocks before I take the rocks, you know, to the end. So I've done a little more work on them as you can see, but I just, before I put a whole lot more effort into it, I thought, well, what if we end up covering them with plants? Cause hey, this is the jungle. There's a bunch of random plants. And although I don't know what they are, they're kind of distinctive. You know, big leaves are distinctive, bright, beautiful green colors. All that good stuff, you know, that people would think about when, and maybe this is like an island even, you know, something very tropical. It looks like an island to me, <laughs> doesn't it? Or something near a coastline. There. I like it. I just love the... I love the effect of this. I think that's just so cool. All right, so anyway, rather than destroying my rocks, you know, all the hard work, I'll destroy the easy work. <laughs> and then I'll come back with the hard work over top, only where I need it. How's that for a plan? All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs and Brushline. Thanks for watching.